I'm T. Payne from impatientprogrammer.net. This is PySide and PyQT Q Toolbar in four minutes. A toolbar is a bar or pub where a whole bunch of dudes who have terrible pickup lines dressed and act stupidly in front of women. That is a toolbar. I used to hang out there a lot. <laughs> A Q toolbar is a movable panel containing a set of tools or controls. You use it in just about every major application you've ever used. It typically changes the functionality of your mouse or performs some action. Let's look at an example. This example is very similar to previous tutorials. First, we import sys to run our program, import from the Qt file we have next to our current file to make our code work with both PySide and PyQt. Check the description below for more details, if you're unfamiliar with this. Then we create a simple print function that will print out the text bound to the current action. We instance the window, note that it is a main window and not a widget. Then we create an instance of Q file icon provider to get some built-in icons from our OS. Next, we instance a toolbar from the main window right here. We add an action, aka tool, aka button, to our toolbar with the add action function. We get the file icon from our OS and set the text of the action, aka the tooltip, to ham right here. After that, we connect the action trigger signal for the action when it is clicked to the print function created up above. Finally, we resize, show the window, and run the application. Let's go ahead and see what it does. So here is the window it creates, and here is the toolbar it creates. Notice that if I click this, ham is actually printed out down below. And if I desire to, I can move this toolbar to dock anywhere I like, whether it be top, left, bottom, or right size of the main window. Awesome. Let's look now at a more complicated example. Up top, we added code to set the passed in action to be checkable, aka toggleable, and then we check it. At line 14, we create an action group that will act exactly as the button group did from the previous tutorial, but for actions. We then create more actions, adding them to the action group. Finally, we set the action group to be exclusive right here meaning that only one action or button can ever be checked at a given time. Let's see what this code does. Here's our window we've created with our toolbar up top. Notice it has three buttons now instead of one, and it has a separator dividing up the folder and trash can. It works just the same, and we can redock it wherever we desire. And when I click them, notice that it prints out my file, the text that I get when I hover over any given button, and the button that I last selected remains checked while the other two are forced to be unchecked. This is the exclusive feature in action. And now for some common functions. The first function we have is my main window, which would be an instance of our window, dot add toolbar with some text packs in. And this allows you to create a toolbar for a main window instance with the text being the identifier for the toolbar. Then we have add action, which takes in a number of different arrangements of arguments, but my favorite is icon with text. You can add an action slash button slash tool to a toolbar with the text set as the tool tip. You can also create a separator using add separator. Set icon size sets all the icons in the toolbar to the same size. Set orientation sets the orientation of the toolbar. Shelves, ribbons, toolbars are often at the top left or right of other windows and almost never at the bottom. So I'd recommend avoiding placing your toolbar at the bottom of your window. Action triggered is a signal for when an action is clicked. Excellent work, buddy. Exercises below in the description. If you would like to see a practical application built from scratch, check out my tool development series linked in the description. Thank you to all my wonderful patrons. And as always, like, subscribe, and keep the dream alive.